And and I think this is something that um I think it would also be good if we can uh, if, if if you can talk to your to your clients about this. We cannot escape from the fact that the shilling is depreciating and it's depreciating very rapidly. Over the last 30 sure. years, over the last 30 years, the shilling has depreciated on an average of um of around three to three point five percent every year. You know, over the last 30 yeah. years, and and anybody can go. There's this website called oanda.com. That's o a n d a dot com, and you can go historically to find how much the dollar was exchanging for in 1999 or in 2007 so that's something that we can't run away from and in the in the last 10 years that average has been about um has been about five percent so the comparisons that i was giving uh whatever is gonna double in value uh mm -hmm. in kenya within let's say um how do i put it you know like what doubles in what doubles in value in in kenya in seven years in dollars that will take you only five years you know and this is based on some advanced mathematics that i did and i can share with you so essentially if if you're getting an roi of 15 percent there's something called the rule of 72 so in the rule of 72 you just take the percentage and divide by uh you just take 72 and divide by the percentage so let's say like uh it's 15 percent 72 divided by 15 is around five it comes to around 4.9 close to five so that means that investment is gonna double within five years but now once you start doing the the dollar conversion because now yes it has in it, it has appreciated in kenya shillings but it has lost value in dollars so that's where you know like what will take uh what will take uh is it so that 15 percent 15 percent in Kenya shillings will be the equivalent of 10% in dollars you know and this is just you know like a rule of thumb that you can use uh and uh, and I was using the S&P 500 because the S&P 500 on average uh it doubles in value you know like every 7 years but for you for you to get that value that you're going to get in 7 years that doubling has to happen faster in the Kenyan shilling and this is where you know, like, uh, I think people need to be very careful and they need to factor in. And that's why, you know, like uh, any investment in Kenya, you know, that's giving you anything less than 15%. And 15% is on the lower side. You can get that passively in America by sleeping and not doing anything. <laughs> and that's the reason why I was telling people, you know, like, if you're doing this, you know, there are other people who are doing it for, you know, I'm doing it for my parent. You know, I have a second wife, you know, that I'll be renting this house. That's different. But if you're doing it purely for the return, you know, like from the mm -hmm. calculations that I've done, anything below 15%, we're talking cash on cash. This is a transaction that was done cash. We're not even talking leveraging, which we're going to talk about later on. We're talking cash on cash transactions. Anything that's giving you less than 15%, for example, you bought a house for, for 20 million shillings in Kilimani, and the most you can charge mm -hmm. in rent is a hundred thousand. You know, like a hundred thousand per year, that's gonna give you one point two million. One point two million is uh is not even ten percent. So you're losing. You know, I, I mean, and I'm sorry if you're one of those people who owns a property in Kilimani, uh, you bought for 20 million and what, you can't why, charge. Why, why you're you losing. Killing, why are you killing real estate? No, no, I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm being honest, no, no, you're no. losing. So that's where. Let's that's where... use the actual prices for Kilimani because our, when I was blocked out, I was saying uh, those are the people who buy out without valuation. They bought property worth 5 million then. At 20 million. They're in a big hole. It's just like those people who bought houses here in the US. Like you buy now when the market is like the way it is. Then it goes all the way down. What happens? But you see, that's a different scenario in Kenya. And 15% ROI in Kenya is quite low. And so so that's where. So so let's talk about let's talk about uh you know, like what areas, for example, in Nairobi tend to have mm -hmm. the highest ROI. You know, like uh, if I'm coming in with my five million. You know, I'm looking for the highest ROI area. Where where would you recommend? 
if you go to the prime areas, they are most likely not going up any much higher. They might even go down if that's a thing, which is not a thing in Kenya mostly. I tell people to go to the upcoming areas. Look at Kitengela. When I myself was buying in Kitengela, I was buying at 250. In 2016, there was nothing going on. You know how I said earlier, Kenya, we have these, like we are grabbing, we are building, something is coming up everywhere. People are moving, the people from the village, or people are getting jobs, people are moving back. Things are growing in a very, very big rate. If you've gone back to Kenya, any one of us here, you can attest that things have really changed. So I tell people, go to the growing areas. That's where you buy cheaper. And then the, you, you have a big chance of your property going up. My Kitengela right now is $2 million from 2016. You